In this game, I will be asking a popular YouTuber about five different Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Each round, the guests will have five questions about the round's chosen card. Each answer is worth a point until the final round where they must guess that card's price. The better the answer, the more points the guest receives. Can your favorite YouTuber win the ultimate prize? You will just have to watch to find out. If you want to win the giveaway for this video, which is half of the prize money won during today's game show, just like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications, and let me know down below who do you want to see on the next episode of Guess That Price Season 2? Welcome back to Guess That Price. This is the first episode of Season 2, and we have, of course, the man Simo on the other end to test his knowledge of Yu-Gi-Oh cards and their prices. How are you doing, Simo? I don't know why you have me on this show. I can't tell you the last time I even picked up like a card in the last five years, but you know, here we are. It's for entertainment, I suppose. I'm doing good, Ruxa. Thanks for having me. This is a new season and things have changed. Ooh. So I think that you might be excited with some of the changes we have here because a lot of this stuff, I feel like as I was going through here, I was like, Simo is gonna know this kind of stuff because <laughs> it's not just prices this year. Oh. So it's guess that price. So the final and the most important question will be the price. Okay. But we actually have multiple other questions about the cards and you can earn points by answering those correctly. And I'm not gonna reveal what the questions are just yet because I want you to be surprised. But I think you're actually gonna do a little better on these than some of the prices. As long as I beat Gage at the end of it all, that's all I care about. Well, last year, or at least last season, he destroyed you, so you have to step it up. I need my retribution. <laughs> all right, Simo, are you ready for the first card? I'm gonna tell you the card name, and then we're gonna have a bunch of questions about that card. Okay, let's see what we got. The first card I think you'll be familiar with. We'll see how familiar you are exactly. The first card is the Salaman Great Sunlight Wolf. Ooh. Sunlight Wolf. Okay, so what, what questions do you have to ask for me aside from the price? <laughs> so the price is going to be last, so okay. we'll, we'll get to that later. That The price is worth the most points based on how, what you guess and how close you are. Okay. The first question is a two-part question. It is, when did this card come out, which year, and which set did it come out of? You get two points if you answer both correctly, one if you get one, and zero, obviously, if you get zero. So if you can name the year and the set for this card, you get two points. Okay, so this is a bit of a trick question for people who might not know, because immediately, I think most people are gonna say, oh, duh, this came out in the Salman Great Structure deck. It did not. It came out in a core set that I believe came out right before the release of the Salmon Great Structure deck. Because I remember doing a video on like the budget Salmon Great Structure deck with just three structure decks and it didn't have a Sunlight Wolf, so the deck sucked. And we also were just like near this point in like history of Yu-Gi-Oh! So Salmon Great is part of Toss, but it was obviously like early. So now I have to remember my set releases around that time. Um, this is why I think you might be good at this, just because you've done so many of these series. Yeah. You've been through all these sets a lot. I'm a bit of a mini Yu-Gi-Oh historian at this point. So where it gets a bit confusing is I'm pretty sure the Salmon Great structure that came out in 2019. It was early 2019, I believe. I think it was like January or February. It's tough though, because I don't remember the core sets. I have to think about this. The core set that came out around that time it was either like late 2018 or early 2019 for when I will summer. remind you that your lifeline for this set of questions, because there is a lifeline for each set of questions. So if you want a lifeline for the year of the set, the lifeline option that you have is one word from the original set. It's going to make it a lot easier if you don't know the original set. It won't necessarily help you with the year if you don't know when that came out, but it will help with that other part. But see, this is the first set. So or this is the first card. I want to save this for when it's actually difficult. So I'm, I'm not, just I'm, reminding you that that is an option. Yeah, if you're not sure. Thank you. But I, I will I will politely pass on that. OK, <laughs> OK. I'm pretty sure I'm trying to remember like what sets came out around that time. So like Dark Neo Storm was Orcus. So it's before Dark Neo Storm. What was before that? Like soul fusion was around there as well soul fusion was a purple set soul fusion had like a lot of the random like thunder crap i'm trying to think if there was a set between soul fusion and dark neo storm and i think there might have been because i think soul fusion was the end of 2018 dark neo storm was the dark neo storm was like may 2019 so i think there was like a set in between those two? Maybe, there could be, who knows? I'm trying to think of like the, the color, cause like you know how the, the, the booster packs follow the color wheel? 
Like they have yeah. that pattern. I'm trying to remember like the order of the colors. That's a, that would honestly be a really good lifeline. The color of the booster pack. The color of the booster pack would be good. Yeah. That's what I should do because this other one's a little bit too easy. No, I kind of like what, that actually, actually. No, Soul Fusion. What Dark Neostorm was right after Soul Fusion, I think, because I think purple and then black and then white is the order. Because I'm thinking Gladiator's Assault and Phantom Darkness, then um, Light of Destruction. So I actually think Soul Fusion was right before that. So then the question becomes, is I think blue comes before purple? <laughs> We've gotten into colors. Yeah. Well, the first question. Okay, so I have to guess the year and the set specifically. Yeah, but you get one point for each. So if you only uh, get one, you still get a point. Okay. It's tough that it's like the end of a year. If it was like in the middle, that would be a lot easier. I'm going to give you one slight hint just for free here. You have not said the name of the set yet. Oh, okay. So clearly I'm missing something. Then. How polite of you. Thank you for the free lifeline. You're the first guess. You get one <laughs> bonus hint. Wow, I'm way off then if I'm forgetting it. What's, God, I'm, I'm trying to visualize. You're forgetting a big set. You're forgetting I, a big one. I have to be forgetting a big one. I remember it was a rare too. Well, that's good because that's the next question. So <laughs> hold on to that. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm kicking myself that i can't remember the set i'm like visualizing it too you're gonna be so mad if you don't remember this <laughs> you can use you can use i don't want to waste lifeline. the lifeline ruxin i don't want to waste the it's lifeline. not a waste if you get the answer right when you would have missed it but i can save it for something else but it, it can only equal two points at oh max god. Oh my god. So if you, you know miss what? both, Fine. you talked me into the lifeline. I'll use it. Whatever. You get to know one of the words from the set. So it's a two word set. So yeah, I'm giving okay. you 50% of the word here. Yeah. And this might help you with the year. Do you want the first or the second word? Oh I'll my you god, pick. you're going to make me. It's all in your hands. Second. I feel like the second's going to be more descriptive than the first. The second word is strike. Savage strike. So white was before black. Okay. So I, I, God. Okay. Yeah. So it's savage strike. Uh, Savage Strike. Oh God, now what? <sighs> was Savage Strike right at the end of 2018 or the beginning of 2019? Oh, this is so much more fun than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> God, I feel like that made it. I think it was, I think it was, tw I think it was early 2019. Cause I'm pretty sure Soul Fusion was like right at the end of 2018. You wanna lock those in? And I'm like, usually they release core sets in three month increments. And if Dark Neostorm was May of 2019, I wanna say Savage Strike was like the end of January, beginning of February. And the Salmon Great Structure that came out like a couple weeks after that, I think. So I'm gonna go 2019 Savage Strike. Final answer. Simo? The lifeline paid off. Okay. Two points Good. for you. Two points. Two Savage points. Strike was released on February 1st, 2019. So you're exactly right with the timeline of it. Yeah. So it was it was very beginning of February. I was worried you were going to go 2018 for a second and talk yourself into that. But you figured it out. And fortunately for you, so you're up to two points already. The second question, <laughs> what is the rarity of this original printing? You seem to already know. It's what a rare. was your answer again? It was a rare. It's a rare. You're locking that in? Yep. Boom, three points in a row, Boom. no suspense needed. Easy. You already have three points. That's gonna be every card you're gonna have those two questions. So prepare for that on the future uh, future cards coming. Sure. Now we get to one that's a little bit harder, I think. It's so hard that I made a multiple choice because it would have been impossible <laughs> just to guess. Okay. For a lot of these cards. The next question, question number three for the Salaman Great Sunlight Wolf. How many printings does this card have? Oh my God. Okay. So <laughs> obviously without multiple choice, this would be really difficult. So you have four <laughs> answers here. Your lifeline here is to eliminate half if you need it. Okay. So you could get down to two answers. Sure. Okay. So your first option A is three printings. Okay. Second option B is five printings. Third option C is nine printings. And your fourth option D is two printings. So it's three, five, nine, and two? Correct. I can immediately eliminate two because I know for a fact it comes in rare. It comes in uh, super because it had an OTS pack reprint, which looked very clean at the time. And then it also comes in ghost randomly. I don't know who decided it needs to come in ghost, but it does. <laughs> I can also eliminate three because I believe it also comes in ultra. I got like a reprint in one of like the, the side sets uh, as ultra. So that's that's four. And then I think it has a 25th anniversary printing as well, which would put us to five. So it's between five and nine. So I don't need a lifeline. The question is, are there four more printings of this card? Um, 
the thing is, I don't need to know if there's nine necessarily, because I just have to know if there's one more than five. Because if I know there's six, then the answer is nine, because then it can't be five. That's true. It's also assuming that you're correct on all the printings. That is true. That is true. I really want to say it has a common printing at some point. I feel like it got a common printing somewhere, and I don't remember what, but I swear I've seen like a common version of it before. But if it also came in like the rarity collection or anything like that, that could have been the extra four printings right there because it's been like, uh, like 25th anniversary and like all the different things. So like that's where it could possibly hit nine. Uh, you know what? I'll say nine. All right, you locking that in? I'm locking it in. Final answer. You were right about almost everything except the answer. Uh, you nailed every printing except you added the 25th anniversary, which doesn't exist. Oh, okay. So, so there's a I common printing in the Tin of Lost Memories. There's a Ghost Rare. There's a Savage Strike printing. There's an ultra rare from Armageddon, and then there's the OTS pack, but there's no 25th there's anniversary. There's no 25th. I don't know why. For some reason, I thought there's a 25th anniversary one. So I was right with the common, which would have put us to five. Yeah. And I think yeah. because and I thought there was a 25th, that would put us to nine then because it would have like the extra version. So, and I'll, gi I'll give you one extra hint is that if it was in uh, Rarity Collection, it would have seven more. So it would have been over. Nine. Oh, it would have been over. Because yeah, it has true. to have seven. So yeah. for a few, and there may be some cards that have Rarity Collection printings. I don't even remember what I gave you, but... Uh, <laughs> Okay, but that's okay. You're still at three points out of the possible four. So you're that's still okay. doing pretty good. That's okay. That's a t The multiple choice is one of the tougher ones. That's pretty hard. I'm impressed I knew all of the other printings of Sunlight Yeah, Wolf. you you were <laughs> nailing everything, but that shows you how hard that is. Like, if you just mess up one thing, you can me miss the multiple Where choice. Where was the but common from again? The common was from uh, 2020 10, I believe. Oh, yeah, the okay. 2020 it, was 10. A, it was a 10. Okay. All right. The last question for this card, which is our price question. So I changed up how this works because there's no tiers and stuff like that this year i wanted to be able to be more flexible with which prices we use and stuff like that if you're within 10 percent of the card's price you get three points so you can okay. get as many as you have right now you can double it okay. if you get within 10 percent. if you get within 20 percent, you get two points within 30 percent, you get one point and if you nail it you get four points okay you get right sure. on within within a like it has to be on the dollar sure. to get the four Okay, so we're asking about the same card. We're going to do the Ghost Rare printing because that's like the high rarity. First edition Ghost Rare from the Soul, Soul Burning Volcano. What is the price of this in Deer Mint condition? Full disclosure, I have zero clue what this actually is. <laughs> um, this may shock you as someone who hasn't played modern Yu-Gi-Oh in a minute. I do know that Sunlight Wolf is extremely popular right now because Rescue Ace is a deck. Um, it also is popular because Fire King is a deck and, you know, that's rising in popularity. So I know the card is being played outside of Salomon Great. Uh, so it's going to have some value just because it's one of the best Fire Xyz, not Xyz, best Fire Link monsters, uh, in the game. And by the way, your, your lifeline is lower or higher. So you can do okay. the lower or higher like in the previous game. All right. We're not going to waste more lifelines on Sunlight Wolf. I'm sorry. As much okay. as I love Salomon Great, we're not going to do that. We're going to go with... Ghost rare, highest printing. It's still a ghost rare, right? It's got to have some value. But how much exactly is the question? Yeah, like how much would I pay for a ghost rare sunlight wolf is the question. It's uh, it's from what set again? It's from the side set, right? Yeah, soul burning volcano soul burning that volcano. came out in August. All right, all right, I got my answer. I'm going to go $40. 40 big ones. 40 is that your big final ones. answer? Yeah, I think because it's a ghost rare... And because, like, a lot of the fire decks want it, it does have, like, some higher demand. If it's more than that, I will genuinely be shocked. So, 40 bucks, final answer. Well, you can proceed to being shocked. Okay. This card is $88. 88? It's a, it's a one of! You only need one of it! <laughs> the way you were talking about it, I thought you were going to guess, like, $200. No. And then you said, no. then you said it's a one of, and I was like, okay, you might be coming back toward 80 And then you said 40 and I was like, oh, okay, you're in trouble. <laughs> so, unfortunately... Right. No points. Zero no points. points on this one. I guess I... It's still a ghost rare. At the end of the day, people like their ghost rares. It's performing really well compared to recent legendary duelist ghost rares. Like okay. those $40 would be actually high. Some of them are like 20, you know, they're very low. So it is higher than those, but this one, I guess because of the playability and Sunlight Wolf is kind of a, I think a fan favorite for people who played the, 
you know, the Salamander Actually, deck Salamander. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's got that going for it. It's kind of one of the only good cards in that set. So that kind of helps, too. Sure. Even then, 88 is still, does feel pretty high for that card. Exactly. Like, I feel like, okay, most of the decks that would play need one. If you're actually a Salomon Great fan, you do need, like, three. And so, yeah. like, yeah, but no one's really playing Salomon Great, even if people like the deck. And so, I... I and it could that's, be that's somebody, kind of... like, you mentioned, <laughs> you mentioned it might be a little inflated, which it could be, because I remember it recently being in the 60s, so I think okay. it's gone up recently. And you know so what, I think... if, if it was in, like, the 60s, that's, like, more believable. I would never play $90 for a, a Ghost Rare yeah. Sunlight Wolf. I'm sorry. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, that that's a crazy one, but that's yeah. okay. That's it's okay. okay. It's only the... F we got four more cards. Four more so cards. Just move on to them. You're doing fine. These, this one's actually a little bit, a little bit harder though. So let's see if you know. <laughs> I was writing these, and every time I put the card in, I'm like, Simo's gonna know this card. He's gonna know where it's from. So I feel like you're gonna know this just because of your random knowledge. So let's Good. see if I was right. Card number two. You're up to three points. Yep. Not terrible, but you could. You have room to improve. The Frost and Flame Dragon oh, is our next Yu Gi Oh card. Oh, let's go. All right. So what's first? Set and and uh, y yes, year? the year in the set. Origi of the original printing. Frost and Flame Dragon was from Tactical Evolution. Get easy. And uh, it was, when was Tactical Evolution printed? That's the real question. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let me think about this. 2000 and... Tactical Evolution was right before Gladiator's Assault, which was right before Teledad. So 2007, Tactical Evolution 2007. All right, he had to calibrate all his series together for that answer. <laughs> Is that your final answer? Final answer, final answer. Tactical Evolution was released on August 15th, 2007. Woo! And so you are correct on both of those two points. So you're up to five points now. Secret the Rare, six set, points. I think next, you're gonna crush the next, year in the set. Secret Rare, next. I, I knew you are gonna crush these. <laughs> the, these are the ones I was like, oh gosh, he's gonna get all these right okay well you're on fire right now that's six points in a row nice and quick my own We're frost and fire multiple choice yeah multiple choice here number of printings now this one might be a little bit more difficult this is gonna be tough yeah and because i did not write it down <laughs> let me make sure that i know the answer i think i do because i did it yesterday but time out wait while you're looking that up the reason that i i know frost and flame dragon so well is because i actually attended the sneak peek for it and i remember like people think because everyone loves their chaos monsters right everyone thinking like oh yeah. this is so sick it's like a fire water chaos monster right not that it's good um, but the artwork was just sick. And so I, I remember just like a lot of people liked the card just because it was um, it was just something different at the time. Yeah, I found this card recently in like a collection. And I was like, this is one of the coolest looking cards Isn't I've it? ever seen. It's sick. Like, yeah, the secret rare looks amazing. Yeah, on it. I was beautiful. like, this is such an unknown card. Like, I remember it was like, OK, in duelings for a little bit. And I'd kind of heard of it from there, but I didn't know what set it came from. And then I got it. I was like, this is a secret in tactical evolution. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. N the number of printings. For Frost and Flame Dragon, here are your answers. All right, what are my multiple choices? choices? Yeah, A, three, B, six, C, one, or D, nine. I like how you put these in like a random order. Like you don't just go like one, <laughs> three, six, nine. It's just one, it's, anyway. Well, I thought about that. I was like, should I put it in order? I was like, no, it's more mysterious if it's, you do yeah, it the other way. It's, it's more sus if you do it this way. Okay, th th <laughs> this is gonna be tough actually. So. I know everything about Frost and Flame Dragon prior to this question, but now, okay. The real question is who would in their mind at Konami would think, you know what? We need to reprint <laughs> Frost and Flame Dragon. That, that's what we need to do. <laughs> I will say, I do think this card has at least more than one printing. I think it has like, I think it has like a super rare or like a common reprint, maybe both. I'm pretty sure it's not just like one of those tactical evolution secrets that has like never been reprinted. It could be, but I swear it has like one extra printing. I'm gonna go on a limb and say this card does not have nine printings. That 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 seems insane that this terrible card would be printed nine times. Although So you don't want to use your lifeline as well. No, you're I'm not gonna use my lifeline on this. I wanna save it for later. Okay. So at this point, I'm between three and six. And this just begs the question: would they have really reprinted Frost and Flame Dragon like three extra times? 
And like they could have, like it's just one of those like random bad cards that they could put in one of those. Like they, I'd see, I could see them putting it in like a star pack or like just some random set like <laughs> yeah, that that like yeah. no one actually like buys. Um, this does feel like a star pack card. Like oh, like you, you, the little kids are gonna buy the dollar pack, you know? And then it's and like then oh, like, Frost and Flame Dragon. Gotta... This is so cool, right? Yeah, this is the coolest card I've ever seen. I bet it's really good. Yeah, I'm just trying to put myself into like the mind of the Frost and Flame Dragon. And like, what set would this card be reprinted in? Especially back then, because I feel like there'd be no reason for them to reprint this card now. There's no way this thing has... I'm gonna go with three. I'm pretty sure it has at least one extra printing that is not the secret rare. So I'm gonna lock in three, final answer. Okay. This was a very tricky question. And here's why. Okay. It has the secret rare printing as you listed. Yes. It has the common you mentioned. Okay. And then here's the kicker. Does it have like a Duelist League fucking printing? It has four Duelist oh, League prints. Oh my God. So I knew it. I knew you, there was some random thing I was three, forgetting. But it's actually six because they did four of the same ones. Oh my God. I knew there was some weird thing with this. I knew it. I knew that was- Your like logic a was so sound that I was sure you were going to pick three. Because <sighs> I was like, there's no way they would have printed six. And it's like, he's right. Except they did four at once. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, so in the three- is really like that could be included into one almost, but it's yeah. four different like cards. Yeah, because so, it's like the blue rare, the red rare. Yeah, the it's what, all different yeah. name colors. Yeah. So you were right. Both of these you've been right on. You've just barely missed them. The multiple choice very difficult. <laughs> I'm so tilted. Okay. I'm so you're gonna, tilted. You're gonna recover right here on the price. You're gonna get some points. Am I? I don't know. <laughs> I'm asking you about the first edition secret from Tactical Evolution. What is the price of the Frost and Flame Dragon near mint condition? I feel like I had a better chance with the Sunlight Wolf than this. Like, <sighs> this one is hard. This one is really hard. This is one of those cards that's like collectors have this just because it's like it's a rare first ed secret rare from like an old set. And it looks set. sweet. And it, it looks, looks sweet. good. Yeah, like I would say like it's just like a neat looking card. I don't know if you know this actually, like back in the day, this card was money, even though it wasn't played, like people just thought it looked cool. So like it was actually an expensive secret rare. That makes sense. Cause this is one of the coolest Yu-Gi-Oh cards I've ever seen. Yeah, if only it was good. That's the problem. Yeah, that would be uh, nice too. <laughs> They're like, nah, the chaos monsters, we, we can't do this again, sadly. <laughs> oh my God. First dead near mint, frost and flame, tack of. I could also see this like being a card that no one wants and it's like worth nothing. Like I, I genuinely could see it going both ways. Would I pay more for this than a ghost rare sunlight wolf? That's the actual question. You do have a lifeline. Nah, we're not using that. It's a pretty uh, hard one. I, I got an answer. I got an answer. Okay. For the first edition secret rare frost and flame dragon, we're gonna go with One hundred and twenty-five dollars. One hundred and twenty-five. Is that the final answer? That's the final answer. Yes. Simo, your streak of not knowing prices <laughs> continues. <laughs> but I will say this is this is a very hard card. Okay. This is one that I wouldn't have known either, to be honest. Okay. But when I saw it, I was like, I got to do this one because it's so weird. Okay. It's only sixty-five dollars. Wow. So See, that's, it what is I, less that's what than I said. Sunlight. Well, yeah, that's what I it's said. It's less than a Sunlight Wolf. It's kind of crazy. That's crazy. I thought because it's like an older secret and like, especially because those are hard to find, like first dead near mint, like a lot of the older cards, like are kind of like in like the 80 to hundred dollar range. And so, yeah. especially because it has like the cool factor, like maybe it'll be a little bit more than that. Like I could see it, but I could also see it being worth $60. Cause honestly, that's probably what it should be worth. <laughs> honestly, I think your guess is really good. Cause it doesn't have a recent reprint. Like Duelist League is, I think, no, I, okay. Actually, the Speed Duel GX midterm is where the oh, common came out. That probably me. hurt the price. <laughs> that probably hurt the price, actually. It could have been. Yeah. Before then, it's, it had been 12 years or whatever. Interesting. So, yeah, that's still a pretty good guess, to be honest. That's one of the harder cards I've asked about sure. the price. So. I'd be curious if, like, we went back prior to the GX box release, what, like, the price of that card was at that point. And maybe okay, it didn't wait, even I'm, move. Maybe it was still I'm about, clicking like, on the I'm clicking there. on the TCG player graph. The last year, no, it didn't impact it at all. Oh, okay. So it's it's actually <laughs> uh, Because terrible. it's actually gone up. It used to be a $30 card. Wow. <laughs> this year, it was a $30 card. That's insane. That's okay, insane. Okay, wow. 
That I would not have expected. You know those okay. old secrets are sometimes just insane money, whether they're playable or not. That's just like how it yeah, goes. Yeah, there are, there are like super rares from that era that are worth that much. I know. Like <laughs> So that's right. pretty weird. All okay, right. let's we're go going on, on the, the third street card. to get every price wrong. That's what we're doing now. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get. You're on the price game. You're gonna get everything else right. You're not gonna get the prices right. We're gonna rename the series "The Price Is Wrong." The price is wrong. <laughs> I think that you're gonna do pretty well on this okay. one. Okay. All right. The next card is Yazi Evil of the Yangzing. Okay. So first question is year and the set this card was released in. Well, this helps that we just did this in Prague. So <laughs> that does help. Yeah. Set was the, uh, oh God, the new challengers, <laughs> new challengers. I always want to call it next challengers, but it's new challengers. Uh, so it's new challengers. Uh, and that was released in 20, 2014, 2015. It's one of those two. Um, Duelist Alliance was right before that. That was August, so new challengers was the fall set. So that would have been November. You do not have a lifeline, so it's all up to I you. I don't need a lifeline. I'm 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 going into the encyclopedia. One moment. I'm trying to like use another set as like a as a basis year wise. Necroz is 2015. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 2014. 2014. New challengers 2014. Final answer? Yes. The new challengers technically has a the at the beginning, but I'm not going to dock you oh, for that. Excuse me. The new challengers. <laughs> I just let you know for future SEMO uh, encyclopedia moments uh, was released on November 7th, 2014. There we go. There we just go. Just like you okay. said. So yep. two points. So you are you have six points out of these questions. You're crushing these. Yeah. Now, do you know the rarity of the original printing secret? So the way I do these is they have two uh, printings and either one is correct. So this had both a secret and an ulti. So you get that. That's true. That it had the correct. ulti printing as well. Yeah, but it if, also had an ulti, but, yeah. but you got the secret right. So that's three points. Easy. It also helped that, that I pulled this in Prague. So it's very yeah, salient. That'll, that'll help. Yeah, good yeah. memories. Um, let's see if you can get a multiple choice question correct. How many printings does the Yazi have? First okay. answer, okay. A, five. B, three, C, six, or D, eight. I want to say when this got reprinted in the Megaton, I think they kept it secret. I don't think they downgraded it to Ultra in the Megaton. They may have, but I swear they kept it secret because they may not have been to the point with Megatons where they actually swapped rarities around yet. So it's minimum three. I know that. Now the question becomes uh, where the hole is in the encyclopedia of SEMO of <laughs> what printings did it get after those initial three. I feel like it had an ultra print in like a some reprint set at one point. So that would be four, assuming that's even correct. Don't forget about your lifeline. I have the lifelines, I'm aware. <laughs> the fact that Sword Soul was such a popular deck, it could have been that like Yazi got a reprint in some set as well at that point. Like I could see there being like a super Yazi. Maybe it was like, was there like an OTS pack printing of Yazi maybe? I might be just making that up. I feel like it's between five and six. I know there's more than three. I'm pretty sure it has at least four. I like, know, I think, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, logic. <laughs> You're nailing it. I, I'm gonna rule out eight. I don't think it has eight printings. Okay, that seems Officially like, that ruling seems it like out. I like it. I, I think it's five or six. I think it's five or six. Okay, um, you've used your own lifeline here. Yeah, I use my own lifeline. If you're right. If I'm right. Yeah, I, I also <laughs> could have just removed the correct answer. <laughs> but I feel like the fact you specifically gave me five and six is to mess with me. Or is it? Or is it? Yeah, it could have just been three the whole time and I'm just making stuff up now. I'm going to say, I'm going to say five. Final answer. Final answer. Five printings of the Yazi. Simo. <laughs> You've gotten one right! Yay! Five printings! <laughs> Let's go! Okay, you so what were it. the other two? You nailed it! So yeah, the, the ultra printing was from Ghost from the Past. Okay. And then the you, you mentioned an OTS pack print. They got a common there in there a common. in OTS it's so, 17. It's funny. I'm like, I felt like it may have not even been a super. I almost thought it was a common, but Yazi seems like yeah. too good of a card to print a common. So I thought it may yeah. have just been in the super slot, but okay. All right. Yep, it was a, it was a common in OTS 17. So you, you basically nailed all of them. So... 
Very, the Yazi's been bad. your best one. Not bad. It's been your best one. Yeah. And now the question is, do oh, you know no. the price <laughs> of a, the new Challenger's first edition ultimate rare near mint? No. <laughs> Oh my God! Can right. you get within thirty percent to at least get one point? I don't know. I haven't. I've only been within fifty percent of my best. Yeah, so you far. haven't been close yet. But <laughs> now's been the close time. Yet. All right. Are any like actual good decks playing Yazi right now? I don't think so. I'm like I'm so out of the loop with like just random stuff. But it's also like an ulti like Yazi. It's just like a neat card. If this was back during like Sword Soul era, this would be expensive because I'm pretty sure this card spiked up in price during then. Just because, like, it's Yazi. You are perfect on the Yazi so far. Do not blow it now. I know! I can't ruin it! Oh, my God. Do I use the lifeline here to get the perfect Yazi? But there's still two more cards. Two more cards? But you've only used, what, one lifeline? I've only used one lifeline. Foolishly. Okay. You've only used one, and you haven't used the multiple choice one or the guess guessing the price one. Those are the hardest questions, so. This is a tough one. I feel like this one is so dependent on if it's playable or not. What's your ballpark right now? Like, what, what are you I'm, thinking? I'm in like the, I'm in a low range. I'm in like, I, I'm in like the 40 to 50 range. Because it's like, the ulti's probably the most valuable one of them all. Because between that and the secret, people would prefer that. But like, it's not being played in anything. And if it is being played in anything, it's like one deck at most. I'm kind of just tempted to say like 40, but that even seems kind of high, honestly. I'll say 40 bucks. Why not? $40. You're locking that one in? Uh, sure. <laughs> All right. 40 bucks for the ultimate rare. Seems kind of high. It seems said. high. It seems high. He said it seems high. It is indeed high. <laughs> This card is $15. I, I, I'm i like, this is this is way too expensive for this. Yeah, I had a feeling. This is not the perfect Yazi, but you did make one more step toward perfect. So this next card, you're going to get them all right. Okay. All right. All right. Question number four, or the uh, card number four, I should say. Lightning Storm. Okay. Which year and which set was this card originally printed in? Okay. Lightning Storm is Ignition Assault. When Ignition Assault was printed, released is a, a better question. I'm pretty sure it was like in or around during the pandemic. I think it was like before, which would be like, I think it's like end of 2019, beginning of 2020. Time for the encyclopedia. Mm. Well, this is where the this is where the hole in the encyclopedia starts to to form. Yeah, just because I wasn't playing like as hardcore during that. This is when Prague started, actually. Oh yeah, it took you a while to get to uh, the later sets. So. so, what was the green set that was is Rise of the Duelist that introduced Starlight Rares? So Rise of the Duelist was first. So then there's a yellow set. The yellow set's typically the fall set. So then that means Ignition Assault was the red set, which means it was probably the winter set. So I'm going to go with uh, Ignition Assault 2020, final answer. Okay. Ignition Assault is correct. And it was released on January 31st, 2020. Woo! Oh my so you God. nailed it. Uh, Rise of the Duelist did not introduce Starlight Rares, though. Oh, no. Um, What's it called? The... um. Rising Rampage. Rising Rampage. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, yes. You were close. I, you were close. Yeah. But I thought you were about to go way off when you said that. I was like, where is he going no, with no, this? No, 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 <laughs> no. I was going just based by the color initially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, you still nailed it. You got it right. Now, do you know the rarity of the original Lightning Storm? So the original Lightning Storm uh, was a secret rare, but it was also a Starlight rare as well. You are correct on both of those. So that might help you with your multiple choice coming up. So that is another point. You've nailed all of those so far. On to the multiple choice, which has been this. I hate pretty this. tough. You got the last one, this. though. How many printings does Lightning Storm have? Here are your answers. I'm ready. Option A, 15. 15. Option B, 5. Option C, 10. Or option D, 11. Okay. So... Secret rare, starlight rare. This is where things go off the rails because I, I'm i pretty sure this has a rarity collection print, which would add seven to that. So then that would put us to nine. I believe prior to that though, it also had a 
ultra rare reprint because I remember everyone was like clamoring that Lightning Storm is so expensive. And then they printed like the ultra in some side set or something. And then that like cut the price in half effectively, which was good. Uh, then it went down from like $100 to like 40 or 50. So that would put us to 10. The question is, where does it keep going from there? That is the question that you have to answer. Uh, lucky me. Lucky me. <laughs> I'm going to go with 11. I don't know why. My gut's telling me 11. Not that my gut's been doing me a good job in this episode, but I'm going to go with 11. Final answer. The correct answer is A15 printing. Wow. I That's insane. <laughs> you got to remember, this is Konami. Staples get printed into the ground. That's recently. true. That is true. All right. What so are the other they, four? Okay. Let's see. 2020. To Ten of Pharaoh God's Prismatic Secret. Oh, the Prismatic Secret and stuff too. Yeah. I think the ultra you were thinking of was King's Court, which also had a collector rare in there. Then Magnificent Mavens had an ultra rare. Oh, Maven did Mavens have two? Mavens had uh the yeah, the the ultra pharaoh. The ultra rare. pharaoh rare. And the, yeah. And wait, and the secret pharaoh rare too. So there was four <laughs> or three in there. Three in the uh in the uh, uh, Magnificent Maven. So you had I, three in there, you had two in King's Court. Yeah, I definitely forgot about like the special alt rarities. I think yeah, that's the high what, rarities I, yeah. were made it insane right there because they, they did two in King's Court and then they did three later and then they did nine in another one. So yeah. they've been going crazy on Lightning Storm. So that one was pretty tough. You were almost there. If you thought of one more, you might have bumped yeah. it up to 15. Yeah. Okay, but that's fine. You're at what? I think 13 points now. So you're doing okay. Final card. Let's see if you know this wait, one. Wait, wait, like the price. Oh, you know the price? You forgot oh, the wait, price. Oh, no. oh yeah. <laughs> That's good, the good whole call, show. Good call. <laughs> Don't forget that. Don't forget that. First episode. We're trying to figure it out. Okay. The price of the card. Let's not forget that. First edition Starlight Rare Lightning Storm near mint. I'm going to actually just do myself right now by saying this. I think I'm going to be the most accurate with this compared to everything else I've said thus far. And I actually That's why I was trying to skip it. I didn't want you to get this. I have a reasoning for it. So the reason is I know that with this set of Starlight specifically in Ignition Assault, it got like overprinted or like there was some issue with like the production of them. And there's like way more copies of these Starlight Rares in circulation than there should be. So all of the Ignition Assault Starlights are like half the price of like regular Starlight Rares, even if they're playable. God, how much did they get tanked though is the question. I guess I could have maintained some value though because they're still like the highest version. I don't know, 15 printings, that's a lot. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna preface this. I feel like prior to the 10 billion reprints, I think like Lightning Storm Starlights were around like 200, 250, something like that, because they were kind of like half of what like a normal Starlight was, which was like four or 500. With all the reprints, I feel like they could have gotten chopped down by like 10, 20, 30%. So going based off that, just cause there's so many in circulation, but people still like their high rarity stuff. I'm gonna go with one, 75 and that still seems high to me but i'm gonna go 175 final answer oh you do have a lifeline by the way don't forget i'm saving that, that for last i'm saving that for last you're saving it for last we you're already sure. got this far we got this far you're sure you, you're gonna save it yes you're sure you're gonna save it and you're walking <laughs> this in yes final answer <laughs> all right 175 you are correct. This this price has been chopped down by Rarity Collection, but it's been chopped all the way down to $97. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, tell me about That's it. I invested insane. in this card. In 2022, I bought it for my $1,000 thing for $300. That's, oh my, that's <laughs> grotesque. That's, just, yeah. that's, oh my God. I can't. That sucks. It is, it is very cheap now. $97. It makes which, sense. When you flood the market, like, what do you expect? Right? Yeah. It, and there's like, our, now there's a 25th anniversary printing. There's collector, air, ultra. There's everything. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I think the collector, not, not the collector, but the 25th anniversary, like all the versions of it specifically, there's a lot of other nice versions of a lightning storm that aren't Starlight. Right. You so, don't need to buy the Starlight anymore, which now you can buy it for $97. So maybe you do want to buy I, it. I but, guess. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, so. Wow. I thought you were talking yourself down there, but that's fine. That's fine. I, this still, last th time? I still thought it was just like, it's a, it's an old starlight for a playable card. I thought max rarity, people still want it, but I think the rarity collection just affected it way more than I realized. So, I mean, I, yeah, I can't be yeah. upset. I figured this one would be a little tricky because I just checked it the other day for my two year check in <laughs> and how I've lost 500 of my thousand dollars already just by holding the cards. Okay. 
you are you're at 13 points. Pretty good, but this is gonna be your best one yet. The final card is enemy controller. Oh, oh let's go. Let's go. Year and set. All right, so enemy controller original printing is Ancient Sanctuary. Uh, Ancient Sanctuary came after Invasion of Chaos, which was 2004, so it's 2004. Final answer? Final answer. Ancient Sanctuary, correct, was released on June, June 1st, 2004. Woo! For two points, you got Easy. all eight points out of there. You nailed all of those. All eight points, you crushed it. Do you know the original rarity though? Ultra rare, because I have a place set. <laughs> <laughs> so you're locking that in. Locking that in. That is correct. So you, I think you got all all those points too. I got so all those points. I did not miss a single point on any of those. You crushed all those. So you're up to 16 points. Okay. Uh, this so is where things choice. are going to go off the rails again. <laughs> you are one for four so far. Okay. The number of printings, your options are, You, by the way, you have a lifeline. So no reason not to use it unless yeah. you just want to not. A, 10, B, 24. <laughs> C, 18, <laughs> or D, 31. Okay, I'm gonna use my lifeline, so go ahead and make it easy for me. <laughs> okay, we are going to remove 10 and 18. Oh, how courteous of you. You picked the two I knew it wasn't going to be, thanks. <laughs> All right. It would be a little too easy if I gave you the right answer. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So for people who aren't aware, Enemy Controller has like 9,000 common printings because they printed it in like, 8 million starter or structure decks just because it's like an easy card to reprint. I'm not even going to begin to try to list all the different rarities of enemy <laughs> controller because we would, literally, we would literally be here for like an eternity if I tried. It's either 21 or 31. It's not that many. You mean 24 or 31? Yeah, 24. Sorry, I can't yeah. read. Okay. Honestly, I'm going to say 31 because I think there are just 31 printings of this card, just straight up. Final answer? Yes. 31 printings is correct. Oh my God. Okay, first, I'm sorry. That's insane that there's 31 printings of 31. a single card I could game. not believe this when I got on the page. I was like, oh my, I had to go to the second page on TCG Player to see all of them. Do you want to list them all off for everyone or you want to save some time? <laughs> all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speed run this. Battle Pack 2, Battle Pack 3. Three, Hidden Arsenal, Chapter 1, Battle Pack Epidon, Champion Pack 1, Duelist Pack, Battle City, Dark Revelation, Volume 2. two. <laughs> Those are the 31 printings. Higher rarities, lower rarities on some of those repeats, but wow, that is a lot of cards. You got that one right. A lot of unique rarities too, because it has like the black rare. It has like yeah, the, the yeah, weird. Yeah, the black rare. It, it has a lot of like the weird rarities that only ever came out in like one particular set. So it just kind of, it's one of those cards where it's like, oh, what card has the most different rarities? Like this is probably, yeah. this probably has a printing in everything except Ghost, in all honesty. <laughs> yeah, Ghost, Starlight, all those like really high end ones. Yeah. But on the lower end, on it has the lower like every ends, single it's one. It's got almost everything covered. Yeah. 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 All right. You are perfect on the enemy controller. Let's see. Uh, you still have your lifeline for this final I guess, do. which is the price, which we are not going to skip. What is the price of the first edition Ancient Sanctuary Ultra Rare? Oh, okay. It's uh, I thought you were going to give me the ultimate rare, funny enough, which those look gorgeous, by the way. I might have. No, to I'm going out. classic. I do like the classic. Um, also, anyone who's a fan of the was it the Dark Revelation Super or Dark Beginning Super? It has a really nice super print from back. Yeah, in the yeah. Day the too. Dark Beginning stuff. Those good. are clean. Those are clean. I just anyway. read them all, but that was a lot. I don't remember any of them. <laughs> OK, so original original AST Econ. So I get to. So my lifeline is I get to ask if it's higher or lower than like some amount, right? Yeah, whatever amount you want to okay. want to pick, and I'll tell you higher or lower. This one's weird. Enemy controller is a card that like goes in and out of modern Yu-Gi-Oh a lot of the yeah. times, just because it's like just generically good. You are within striking distance of twenty points, by the way. If you get within ten percent, you're gonna get twenty. Ooh, okay. And I have a lifeline to help me get there. Yeah. Um, the question is, I, how much do people really value the Ancient Sanctuary Ultras? Because I feel like if you're going by max rarity. Obviously, now the ultis exist, uh, which sort of like blew all the rest of them out of the water. But I actually think a lot of people thought the Dark Beginning or Dark Revelation Super was technically a higher rarity than the Ultra. So I think those actually may be a bit more expensive than the Ultra one. Or they're like close. So, but I don't think they're that expensive. I think they're definitely on the lower end, even if they're like seeing some play. There is one way to find out. There is, and that's with the lifeline. I am going to ask, is it higher or lower than $50? This card is higher than $50. Okay. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised it's that much, but okay. <laughs> I was hoping you would say lower and then I'd be able to get a lot more accurate. But now yeah. this sort of- Now there's a whole world of possibilities for you. Okay. 
Is it more than the sunlight wall? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the real benchmark. I don't think they're over a hundred. I think that's a bit extreme for this card, especially now that the ulti exists. I feel like the ulti would have really knocked the price of this down. So you're between 50 and 100. I'm between 100. 50 and 100. And keep in mind, your higher or lower is just telling you it's higher. It doesn't necessarily it's mean, you know, it doesn't mean it's $5,000. It's just higher than 50. I can also see them being worth like $52. <laughs> that would be quite interesting. Yeah. I feel like a good price for this card is like 60, 65. That's like sort of where I'm at with it. Like maybe 70. <laughs> where is it? Where is the price? That's the question. All right. Will you get All any right. points on the, <laughs> Will on I the get any price points on the final on the final question <laughs> that, to be continued if you get one for next point, It's a win. If you get one point, it's a win. That's how we're viewing this. I'm going to go with I'm trying to hedge my bets in case I'm like too if it's lower or like higher than like what I'm. Thinking. Why are you hedging your bets at this point? You haven't gotten any right. I guess you're <laughs> just go for that's it because I'm trying to get at least one point, Ruxin. I'm trying to get at least that's one fair. Point. That's fair. But if you get three, you get 20. OK, I'm going to be incredibly specific. Sixty three dollars and 50 cents. Final answer. It has to be on the dollar. Oh, OK, sixty three dollars. Fine. OK, sixty three. OK, <laughs> locking it in, locking it in. Oh, man, I wish you had guessed closer to your over or higher or your 52 randomness because this card is $53. Oh, my God. But you do get points. <laughs> That's within 20%, I think, Woo! right? So, six, yeah, that should be within 20%. So, so I, I get think two you points? get two points. All right. Yeah, so you get two points. You get 19. You were, we're so, so close. close to 20. So close to 20. All right, Simo, you finished with 19 points, which overall is a pretty decent performance. But according to the prize scale, you weren't quite there. You're one point away from getting that $50 prize. You do get that $25 prize. So you got something. The viewers can win $12.5 thanks to yeah. you. Shout out to you, Simo. You're also going to win $12.5 as well. So I tried, chat. That, I'm sorry. Look, it's the first episode, so it can only go up from here. And honestly, you did well on the stuff I thought you would do well on. So you didn't let me down. So I'm really proud of you. It'll be interesting to watch other contestants to see like maybe they're really good with the pricing, but like maybe like the inverse of me, right? Where they don't know like the right. years of the set or like maybe the exact set. So like it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see like playing to like people's strengths, how it ends up working out in the end. But at the end of the day, if you don't know your prices, you're not going to win the money. So that's that's definitely my downfall. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I mean, the, the most points come from the prices because it is guess that price of season course. two. So maybe if somebody knows prices and doesn't know the original releases as well, they could still probably outscore you just because they'll get like three or four points on the price guessing where you were getting three every time. But it was you, you knew two of the questions, but they were worth less. So. Exactly. If this was checking your Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge for cards and set releases, then I would get that thousand dollars easy. But that's why I kind of want to add it, though, <laughs> add those in just so like if someone like you, even if you didn't know all these prices, which I gave you some pretty difficult questions, I think, in terms of prices, uh, even if you don't know them, you could get some points based on some other knowledge. And it's really fun to go back. And I don't know all this printing stuff. So seeing like 31 prints of econ was Insane. something I've never thought about before. Insane. So I thought it'd be really interesting for people to see. So Simo, thank you for coming on. It's been super fun. And I'm really excited to do more stuff with you in the future which may or may not happen. Who knows? Thanks we might be recording me. something after this. Who I appreciate knows? it. Thanks again, Simo. And uh, guys, make sure you guys go follow Simo on his channel. Go subscribe for all those awesome series like where he plays with the worst possible deck on Master Duel. <laughs> If you guys enjoyed this episode of Guess That Price, make sure to click the playlist to see other videos from Guess That Price Season 1 or Guess That Price Season 2. It's only Episode 1, so next time we'll have you know updated thing. But there will be playlists available for you guys to go check out the old episodes and the newer ones. Shout out to Tone Fo Show, Daxter, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto Deanna, America Deutster, Leo Gwine, 62, Brad KK Beats, Ananda Tai Show, Ian Musa, Junior Barding, Robert F., Thomas McLean, Changalang, and Joey Castle. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.